What is up, everybody? My name is Andrew Mencher, and this is the Wisdom and Sound Show. If this happens to be your first time with us, welcome. The Wisdom and Sound Show is aimed to provide you with some inspiration to get you started on your journey to becoming successful as a musician, as an artist, or just a creative individual. If you've already started your journey, then this podcast is designed to keep you motivated and in the game so you can reach your final destination. All that I ask is if you find value in what I'm bringing today, please share this with your friends and subscribe on iTunes. If you feel so inclined, you can also leave me a five-star rating on iTunes and review. I would be most grateful if you do that for me. Definitely let me know and I'll give you a shout out on the show and return the favor in any way that I can. I'm always looking for music submissions, so if you have them, high quality MP3s, full length, please send them over. It could be any kind of music, classical, jazz, hip-hop, rock, use your imagination, send it over. My email is andrew at wisdomandsound.com, and you can hit me up anytime. I would also love to hear your stories about your journey and some challenges you faced along the way. So if you have them, don't be shy, send them over, I'd love to hear them. Today's guest is a singer-songwriter. His name is Justin Werner, and you could actually hear his music throughout commercials and films with his most recent release, Without a Bang, being featured in the 2017 Sharon Stone film, Running Wild. Justin, what is up? Hey, hey. What have you been up to, bro? I'm staying pretty focused on one thing these days. I've, I've had a history of, of you know starting up a million projects at the same time, right. and all of them just kind of only getting to a certain you know place, and then and just stopping and getting getting a little burnt out and overwhelmed so i'm gonna try it this way this time it seems to be working you know it's it's kind of showing in the music and and the way we feel about it and i think um and and everything else is is kind of falling into place so i think i think uh i think i found a good you know a good direction for myself are you more focused on your solo thing now because in the past you were more focused on bands I just find that that there's there's a place for everything and and sometimes what's good for the band isn't good for the solo and what's good for the solo isn't necessarily, you know, the right thing thing for the band. So I just but now I'm I, that's my direction is you know, I write. I just write. I don't write and I don't like say okay, I have to write this way because I don't like to box myself in. I like to allow whatever wants to come out honestly to come out and so i write yep. you know and then you know you never know i might just write you know some old 40s sounding tune or something it's just what what wants to happen at the time i just roll with it and totally um and it really doesn't even really have to do with what i'm listening to at the time it just has to do with the mood i think that i'm in and in whatever whatever fits that mood you know uh but um yeah, music is interesting, and, and I, I've, I've been I've been playing it for a long time now. And I, I I came out here to California in '99, but I was playing in in the subways in Boston when I was 15 years old with my brother, and he was teaching me songwriting. And he's a great songwriter himself. His name's Tommy Thomas Thomas Werner. We put out a, an album together, and we called ourselves Spear and Change. We were out here in um, San Diego. About um, we came here in '99 in a van. So first off, he and I were, you know, we were doing our thing in Massachusetts, and you know, we didn't really have a name. I think we called ourselves like the Bros or something like that, and just right. <laughs> you know went with it. And, and we were just just experimenting, exploring music. I was learning, and and uh, but we were writing some pretty fun stuff at the time, and uh, and we decided we're going to move after i graduated from high school we moved to florida we went down there for like a year and then came out here after about a year being in florida which was that was 98 and then 99 landed in um san diego but we we took a bus from uh florida ended up in baton rouge louisiana we bought a van there and uh we drove it out and we we actually like there were six tornadoes that ripped through Oklahoma and Kansas in 99 or 98 and uh and we had just um 
just missed him by a day. We land. We were in. We were in Los Angeles reading the, the headline of the newspaper about the tornadoes that just hit the area that we were in. We, we were like, "Wow, that's crazy." Uh, so we took that <laughs> as a good sign. <laughs> it, uh-huh. we went ahead with it, and we we ended up talking to this guy in a coffee shop. Who told us to come down to San Diego? Because at the time, Jewel was was big, and that was a big deal. And so we were like, you know, all right, that sounds that sounds logical. You know, we're playing acoustic music, so we came down here, and you know, we we definitely had some harder times living in a living in a van for a little while, and um, and and just kind of figuring out what we're doing. We had some really cool experiences, though. Of, uh, while we were in that van experience and you know um i i was actually an extra in um almost famous they just walked up to me while i was standing there on the sidewalk kind of hanging out in front of one of the taco shops with my brother and uh and they were like hey man i had long hair at the time they were like you look like you'd be really good for this movie they were like uh, are you interested in being an extra i was like sure you know uh-huh. next thing you know I'm, I'm over here at the uh getting fitted at their studio in the um in the fitting room and they put me in this like you know tight red t-shirt with some like bell-bottom jeans and i, I was like whoa dude next thing you know man <laughs> things were changing i was like this is crazy dude and so right then i'm um, like you know next i'm in almost famous so almost famous happened i didn't really even know what the movie was called until it came out and I, I just, okay. I had, I really didn't, I wasn't able to fight, but I did get a paycheck from DreamWork Productions, which was really cool. I, I was like, wow, I just got a paycheck from DreamWork Productions. But, That's um, awesome. Yeah, that was, that was my first experience in California. And, um, you know, my brother and I, we were, we, we were really heavy on the playing though. We, we were out there playing all the time and channel eight i think it was channel yeah they walked by and, and they were filming for it was memorial day and they were filming for the uh, festivities there and we were just playing our music on the on the boardwalk and they walked up and said hey can we film you guys playing and so next thing you know we're playing um cats in the cradle by harry chapin and they're filming us and it was it was, it was cool i was like wow man you it's know amazing. one minute i'm in a movie next minute i'm like being filmed by the news it's like yeah it looked like some sort of synchronistic like divine thing happening we were just like just go with it just don't ask questions just just yep. just do it you know and about six months later this guy came up to us and and offered to to bring us to a studio in Escondido and record us and so we went wow. up there and and he paid for the whole thing and and um in the end we did a little bit of yard work in exchange for the the mix the mix down but ultimately this guy really really hooked us up and um and 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 then we uh we were pushing that album. We got on Channel 8 again for that. They did a story on us. And then we did um, Channel 9. We were up in the morning for the KUSI morning music show thing that they do. And, um, yep. and it, yeah, things were going crazy. You know, it was great. Tommy Tommy was having some, some medical um, issues, though. And, and, and he kind of needed to get back to Massachusetts. He was hit by a, um, by a laundry truck when he was... When he was 11 years old, and it it, um, it left him, it gave him gave him bad head injuries to where you know it left him epileptic and um, had a had a his right arm was kind of damaged as well, and uh, and it's it's like kind of a permanent thing. Where, but um, but he you know he struggles with it you know and uh, like, yeah. you know as I said he's epileptic and whatnot. He he we needed to take him back home. It was probably about. A year about yeah we'd been out here for a little bit over a year maybe yeah and and we um we we just had to cruise back to to New England for a little while but we did come back out you know we but that kind of like took a little wind out of our sails and uh, and 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 so the momentum of say. what was happening with the band Bear and Chains kind of you know it just it just kind of stopped and and. We came out, tried it again, and then Tommy Tommy was missing his daughter. She's back in um, Rhode Island, so he went back home. Gotcha. And uh, and I stayed out here, and um, and I met you know I met a lot of people, and I kept kept rolling. Yeah. And I uh, I met this guy. His name's Apollo Eight, Polly Kipling, and he's a he's a local MC and DJ. And 
we hit it off. We started writing music together, and next thing you know, Mark Boyce was in town and uh, from uh -huh. G Love and Special Sauce, and right. and our friend contacted him. This was like back in two thousand eight or nine, and uh, and he contacted him, and you know, we next thing you know, he's in the studio recording an album with us, and. And then <laughs> wow. you know, through through that we 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 got G Love on the album because we had Charlie well Charlie Tuna recorded a track with us from Jurassic Five and and yep. G G Love heard about that and he was like hey you know I wanna um I wanna be on that track he's like I was I've always wanted to be on a track with Charlie Tuna so next thing you know we got Charlie Tuna and G Love and um, Main Flow from Mood. And um, we had main main flow is the one that brought Charlie Tuna. But I actually met main flow with my brother back in '99, um, back when we were spare and change. He actually has main flow. Actually has the spare and change, the CD from back then. It's kind of it's kind of a trip. But then I I didn't I didn't see main flow again for like another I don't know seven years or something like that. And next thing you know, I'm in a studio in OB with with Polly. And Polly was gonna. He was Polly was there. He wanted to introduce me to his friend Mainflow, and I was like, "What?" And so I didn't recognize him at first, but I was like, "I was like um, Mainflow." I was like, Do you, "Are you on Wanna Battle Records?" He was like, "I am Wanna Battle Records." He was like, "I'm." I was like, "Hey man, you remember me?" And next thing you know, we're like, "Whoa, well, uh, yeah." So then, then we're working <laughs> together, and you know, it's it's really cool, yeah. like how all these things just tied together along the way. Would you attribute that because of just your ability to know that you needed to get yourself in the right place to meet these people and to be in the certain circles to be able to? Yeah, no, I think yeah. synchronous to say, I, I mean, my, I've always been not religious. I've always been kind of spiritual, you know, and I, I just, yeah. I've always just believed that like we all kind of have our own inner god that that mm -hmm. knows what it's doing and is connected to whatever wherever we came from and 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 there's a purpose for us and and if right. we just trust that intuition that we have and go with it we will end up in the right place at the right time got you and um gotcha. and so that's what i always do i'd always just go with it that's why we came out here to begin with my brother's the same way we were like it's almost like songwriting is almost like journalism in a way because you need a good story you need something for people you need to experience something in order to have something to give people yep. and people are looking for information they're looking for something to grow on you know and, and absolutely when you, when you when you actually go out and experience something when you go out and really take a different route and just to change the perspective a little bit, just to take yourself outside of that box so that maybe you can see things a little clearer inside the box from outside the box and then also get a perspective of what it's like to be outside the box and the benefits of that, you know? And, uh, and the benefits are that you get to write something different that, that might offer people a little bit of hope or a little bit of understanding or a little bit of patience or a little bit of, 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 of bravery or whatever it is that they need in order to get through whatever it is that they're going through in their life because that was what you had to go through in order to get that song. And so when they listen to that song, they get something similar and it, it, it gives them a sense of comfort. And so me personally, everything that I've ever done in my life was for that because I'm a very passionate writer. I love Absolutely. writing. I've always loved it. And, um, and so I'll, I'll experience something so that I can come back from that experience, no matter what I got to go through, depression, anxiety, fear, whatever it is that I have to, I have to endure in order to get to the end of the line, which is we all know when, when we've hit the end of our fear or the end of our, our anger, the end of our pain, we get that good feeling we get that genuinely good feeling that 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 feeling of victory that real feeling of victory in your life that you feel inside that that takes you to that next level of whatever it is that you're doing and whoever it is that you are you know 
Absolutely, man. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we met in Kung Fu. I see you. I saw you. You know, you achieved a lot, and I know that you understand that. You, you had to go through a lot to get that victory of being able to stand in that place as a teacher. And, I, I, you know, I totally respect that. It's, it's, it's amazing. Oh, man, it's, you know, it's a two-way street for sure, brother. And just to tell our audience our history, I've seen you at the People's Co-op in OB. I think we worked together at a certain time, yeah. but I never really talked, you know, and I always knew about you, but um, just never really made the connection. And then, yeah, one day you walked into Kung Fu school. I'm like, oh, I know that guy, you know, and <laughs> from there, yeah, you know, I saw your work ethic in the Kung Fu school, and I was like, dude, this guy is serious about his his work, his business, and then just to know your musicianship is amazing. So it's it's pretty cool, man, to Thanks. know that you're so in tune. Absolutely. But it's just awesome hearing that you're so in tune with your audience or even with yourself in the sense that you can break through your certain barriers or embrace your problems, if you will, your challenges, which would be your anxiety or depression or things like that. And you see how that brings out the best of your music. I think that's a huge quality. Yeah, thank you. So that's interesting because did you go to school for writing or English literature or even music or, or how did that all come about? How did you know you wanted to be a musician or a storyteller in the first place? Well, um, I didn't, I mean, I, I did take a couple college courses in, in, um, in English um, to, for a basic, you know, but I, I guess, in, you know, I completed high school. I worked for the school district for a while. I think, you know, working for the school district, you get to kind of get your feelers on everything and expand your mind a little bit. So that, that helped. And I've been writing songs. So I started, I actually, when I was born, my brother, had just, he was just, he was just out of that accident where he was hit by the laundry truck and he had a cast on his arm. He wanted to play baseball and do sports, but he was kind of stuck at home. And our brother Ronnie, who the about I want to say two months before I was born, um, which was right after Tommy's accident, uh, died. He was he drowned. Wow. And, um, and uh, yeah, he was a Marine. He was I believe twenty one at the time. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that hit the family really hard. And then, you know, Tommy's accident was, 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 was no fun for everybody. Then, then Ronnie, you know, losing Ronnie. And then I was born. It was kind of right. an interesting time to be born where everybody was in the middle of mourning. And, and I, I just, uh, I think my brother took to the, because my older brother, Ronnie had a guitar. Okay. And, uh, and Tommy, you know, acquired that guitar and he started to go out and play it. He had a cast on his arm. He couldn't play sports, and he was just, you know, he could he could strum, and it was on his actually on his right arm, the cast. So he was able to just strum and use the other hand to do chords and stuff. And he really started getting into it. And next thing you know, he's writing songs, and and uh, and I I grew up around that. I grew up around my brother developing into a songwriter and watching him you know, with his rock band and doing his acoustic music. And then next thing you know, I'm, I'm in a, in a group with him. We did a duo for a long time and, and he taught me a lot about writing and, and he taught me a lot about life, but you know, music and, and just, he, he gave me an ear. He came, he was born in, in 67. So he was raised kind of on that seventies music. So I, right. I was raised in the eighties, but I was raised on seventies music. I didn't start yeah, appreciating eighties yeah. music till recently. I play, I've got a bunch of eighties now in my set when I play my gigs, but um, yeah, then I was like, I wasn't listening to the 80s stuff unless it was playing on the radio and my parents were driving around or something like that. I'd hear my brother, though, downstairs blasting Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, the Beatles, you know, so I grew up listening to all that. And then next thing you know, like I'm jamming with my brother and, and I'm learning songs. We're both going down to the subway together. We get down there like eight or nine o'clock in the morning we wouldn't leave until like eight o'clock at night we'd stay there all day wow. we'd play down in the subway we, every weekend i'd come down and be, i'd be going to school during the week but on the weekends i'd look forward to coming down to 
Berlin with my brother so we could get on the train and go down to Boston and play music in the subways. And I did it all day long. I remember playing until my fingers were like, they were numb. And then the next morning I'd wake up and my fingers would be super sore. And I go back, we go back down to the subway and I just keep playing until they went numb again. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true dedication, man. Straight up. <laughs> I love it, but that's yeah. what it takes, man. You know, it's it's amazing. <laughs> I mean, that's what's so inspiring about your journey is like, dude, that's that's the real work right there. And so anybody that's listening, you they know that it takes real work to get to the destination. I mean, it's not really about the destination, although you always have that in mind, but the journey is what makes it sweet, man. Yeah. You're always going through that. Your fingers get sore, metaphorically, or, you know, mm. they get sore and, and they go numb. And then they callous and they become durable. They became, they can withstand anything. And it's useful. It's a good thing. It's not like, you know, you go through life that way. You, you go through right. life, your fingers, they callous. You know, they, they, you go through that, that your, your, your fingers of your soul, you know? Yeah. And, and that's, and that's, I think, all of us experience that in, in whatever it is that we're doing, if we're really trying to take it all the way, you know? Right. And, um, yeah. and I think that everybody has that inside of them. And I, I think that everybody longs to have, you know, have that, that piece of mind of, of kind of being able to know who they are to a certain degree, at least long enough to, to either write a song that really says something that they meant to say or, 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 or have a piece of work of some sort that, that is finally saying what it is that they meant to say, whether it be to put an organization together to help some people over here or to help the ocean or to, you know, stop pollution mm -hmm. or whatever it is that they, they want to do. Yeah. I think that everybody has that inside of them and for the ones that neglect that they're the ones that go through the most pain which you know i think they they those who go through pain mm. a lot of the time cause the pain as well for others and especially that kind of pain and so right. and so I, I think that like you know i think there's a lot of growing up to do for people spiritually that way to where they can reach inside themselves and find that something else that they were meant to do here you yep. know, as opposed to what they quickly jumped into because they had to. You Absolutely. Know, I, I, didn't, I didn't grow up that way, and I was fortunate enough to have parents that supported me in playing music. They didn't know what I was going to do with my life. My dad wanted me to go to college right away. Sure. And, you know, but I, I didn't, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to, I wanted to live first. I wanted to go find myself, and then I would know exactly what I wanted to do when I go to college. You know, so now I'm, you know, I'm taking classes. I took, a, I took, a, um, I went to the last spring semester. I'm going to go probably for fall this year. But I, you know, I'm, I love psychology. I, I'm thinking about psychology. I'm thinking about philosophy. I'm thinking about all these different. You know, and it's funny, I'm thinking of everything but music for college. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right. But but it's all this that's great content for the music, you know. Right, I totally get exactly. it. Yeah. That's the truth. That's cool. All of us get inspiration at times and at times we're not feeling inspired. So what do you do to get yourself back in the game? I mean, when your fingers are hurting <laughs> to the point where they're just numb, how do you get yourself back up? You you just you go with it. You know, you kind of go with the flow of what your body wants. You go with the flow of what your mind wants. You be honest with yourself. That's the trick. That's what gets you through those finger pains to begin with is you're not thinking about the finger pains because you're too occupied with the trip you're mm. on. You're experiencing growth and you're willing to go through those growing pains and then you know i think everybody needs that time of rest in order to actually be able to catch up with that side of life and be able to maybe just i think everybody needs a little break once in a while from from things and but there's always something else that pops up to take its place and for me as a creative person if i if i'm not writing songs because i just like i went through like a year almost like last year of not writing anything and okay. uh and i was just like okay well you know what i was i was a little frustrated that i wasn't able to like come up with anything that i really genuinely liked and then you know i i just let it go 
And I was like, well, there's something else that I need to do. You know, it's got to be some sort of, there's got to be some sort of growth somewhere that I need in order to get myself to, to the point to where I feel like I have something to share again with people, something genuine, something coming from experience. And so, um, yeah, that's when I, I jumped into a marketing class. Actually, I was like, I, I need to know more about how, how to get my music out to people because I really feel like I, I was put on earth to do this. So I was yeah. like, okay, I'm going to go there. I'm going to check this out. I'm going to learn about this marketing thing. And then, you know, take a little bit more English and, uh, and now I'm like, okay, well, yeah, there's, 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 I think I did the right thing there. I'm, I'm not trying to like become a marketing agent or anything like that. I'm not trying right. to get into the business. I just wanted to understand what I'm doing. And so it's, I think that doing, taking these steps and just saying, okay, well, I'm obviously not supposed to be doing this right now. So pick up a book, go get a book. I like to go to the bookstore. I'll, I'll get a book. I'm, right now I'm reading um, The Hero with the Thousand Faces by Joseph Campbell really good okay. book it's about the hero's journey which that's what we're all on but yep yeah he's a, he's a good one to ask questions to ask that question he'll, <laughs> he'll answer it all day <laughs> right right that's uh, cool man i'll have to check that book out for sure it's good so how do you go about releasing new music do you think that you should make as much music as possible and put it out as soon as possible or do you just take your time and let it naturally come? I think that a song is, is at its most potent when it's just created and that that you that the creator feels that potency the most yeah. right when it's born. And and that mm. when we, we can develop it, I think it's okay to hold on to it for a minute, develop it. But I think that we know when it's time to let it go, which I think usually is pretty immediately i think is the best time to do it in the past i've written so many songs that just end up in a pile of songs that i don't I, they're, they're probably never going to go out and it's sad because there's some good stuff in there in my yep. opinion and other people have been like yeah man this is a rock and song man why can't i get this on itunes i'm like i don't i don't know i just <laughs> i don't know i did never really yeah you just get caught up and, and that's what i said like i was saying like i get i get going on so many things all at the same time next right. thing you know i overwhelm myself and it just sits there you know yeah. and so the excitement goes away too and i'm like yeah just when you create something it's it's good to get it out as soon as possible like the song that i landed in the movie running wild the song without a bang i my friend e emailed me and you know I felt this inspiration, you know, I was like, okay, well, you know, I'll give it a shot. And, you know, I, yep. I sat down and I started writing this song like pretty much immediately. And, uh, and I had that, you know, first verse, which is all they needed of the song. And I, 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 I recorded a rough version of it, sent it off to her and she was like, they want it. And I was yep. like, wow. okay, cool. Awesome. <laughs> you know, it was right then though. I just, just created it. It was hot off the press and, and, and right. Yeah. Literally it's like news or something like that. It's like, well, you know, gotcha. I want to know about what happened today, today. And, you know, and then tomorrow, so it leaves room for tomorrow. And, and I think that, like I was saying in the journalism respect, how, how writers are like, almost like journalists, like even if you're writing a song, if you're, if you really know what you're doing, you're staying up with the times and, right. and it, and it applies to the time. And so it's, it's the hottest at the time that it was created because it was meant for that time. Uh huh. You know? Yeah. I read the article in San Diego reader and yeah. And it appears to me that you just wrote the song in about 10 minutes or so. Is that? Accurate? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it pretty much was like, you know, it, and that's the funny, I mean, it was like a 47 second verse and I, I mean, it's, yeah. it's like, okay, well, as soon as you get, it's like a thread, you know, you yep. find a thread and you just kind of keep pulling on it. And it's, once you get it, one word leads to the next, you know, you get your ideas is, is it's like when it just comes like that for me, I just boom. And next thing you know, it's there. Yep. And I have it and, and um it's yeah, it's it's not really it's not really a matter of like even even asking myself what, what angle do I want to take as much as I just kind of start playing and saying and I, I say, Okay, well, you know, I know that it's I'm trying to come up with an Americana song, like a country western Americana. Uh huh. And um and it's reminiscent to the Johnny Cash Folsom Prison Blues. So I just kinda went with it and I was like, Wow, you know, and then my, my wife 
she popped her head up and she was like, I, I think that's it right there. And I was like, okay, yep. you know, so <laughs> I think that was all just like another like synchronistic, intuitive, follow your heart type of moment of just, just saying, all right. And then when you're doing that, things happen like that. They happen instantly. Right. Totally. They, you know? Yeah, man. That's amazing. It's a great track. I love the harmonies. That's something that stuck out. It's like, oh man. Okay. We're sounding Thanks. good over here. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I wouldn't expect anything less, of course, but a uh, good track for sure. As a matter of fact, let's play this one right now. It's called Without a Bang by Justin Werner. <laughs> Take me there tonight And they're gonna throw my ass in prison Keep me there for life I've been doing things my own way Take the law in my own hand I ain't break my back for nothing And I sure ain't going out without new music from a label perspective trying to shop your music to a label or self-release and which is better um i think that if you can self-release yeah. of course it's it's the best route um but if you find an honest label that you know that all all they're looking for is is a fair share of of, of you know what you're all making together yeah. i think that's i think that's doable too you know there's been some really successful labels and successful bands out there that you know there's bands obviously right now that aren't struggling because you know they have a good label right. you know working for them so i mean it, it's it's kind of hard to say it, it's it's a tougher route to to do it yourself yeah. but i suppose it, it's it's more rewarding in the end because you don't have to pay out to so many people but um, you know, eventually you get to pay out to people, anyways. When you get somebody, you know, taking that stress away, kind of gives you that that room to um, to be the writer and be the artist. So, I, I guess uh, I don't know. In a way, in a way, I think that 
the hard work of doing it yourself gives you that perspective too, like we were talking about. And, and so, and I, I guess it depends on the perspective you're trying to write from and, but yeah, it's different for everybody. I, I, I personally, that's why I'm, I'm, I really haven't been approached by like a major label. I've, I was approached in the past by okay. a couple of different, different smaller things, but I, I never really was too interested in that because it wasn't, didn't seem like a, it was going to be very, much more beneficial than just doing it myself. So I, right. I just, I kind of said, okay, well, I'm just going to keep doing this until either, you know, somebody pops into the, I mean, I have like, I have crossed paths with like Tom Russo up in Amer at American recordings okay. through friends who he heard one of my songs and he was like, I want to mix that song. And my friend and I, at the time we, we lost the song, we didn't have the stems for the song oh, wow. for him to mix. And so it was kind of an opportunity loss. We didn't sit down and try and re-record the song. We just said, okay, that was it. That was like, that was the take. So we just, we let it go and now we regret it. But, right. you know, there's, there's been times in the past, you know, I was actually Epitaph Records. I, I was in contact with like one of the main guys there. And um, he was like, you don't have enough of a following, huh. you know? Yep. And I was like, man, if I had the marketing though, yep. then... So, you know, you learn things along the way and you're like, okay, well, these guys, they, this is what they want. And if you, if, you know, if you do that yourself, maybe you can get there yourself too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, by the time, by the time they want you, maybe you won't need them. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> totally. <So. laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I think that's the uh, ultimate goal for sure. But right? wow, that's cool because then it goes back to, I mean, you're taking classes for marketing, so you obviously don't have a manager or anything. You're just doing it all your own. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome because, right, when you're hitting the top, top successes that you're looking for, you'll have it all on your own. So I think there is something to be said in that. Yeah. For sure, man. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, that's an inspiration for sure because I'm I'm sitting here doing my thing, trying to promote this podcast and my company. You know, I'm an audio engineer, so it's tough trying to find new clientele. And from an artist perspective – to get someone to listen to your music, it's like, what kind of service do you offer besides music? You're not going to solve their problem, you know? So, right. so I'm, it, <laughs> it's a tough journey. But yeah, you're doing a great job, man. I, I love your music and, and your artistry. Thank you. Absolutely. What do you say your biggest goals are for 2017? So I just started this band here. Yeah. And, um, and we're we've got a we've got a good amount of songs that we've we've created and and um and we were hoping to have an album done by the end of the year yeah. and um there's just you know some personal goals of like you know maybe i i we're we're living in a really nice place we have a, a nice garden but maybe you know making it on the botanical aspect of things getting things a little bit more you know growing our own food, things like that, that kind of help us, you know, keep that ecology going. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, I think that's, that's like staying focused on the one thing is, is one of the main things. And, and that is a, is a really good focus because I get excited about it. So right. getting that album, recording that album, hearing it and like, you know, being able to say, there it is, we did it, you know? Um, but, uh, that, you know, that's, and then school too. Yeah. That's another goal this year is to get in, into some classes and, and, and do a little bit more learning. Very cool, man. You just keep it simple. Yep. <laughs> I love it. I love Tor it. Tours and things like that. They, they just kind of manifest themselves, you know, and I'm, I'm not really, I don't really go look to create those things as much as I take the sign and say, okay, somebody from Oregon's contacting me, somebody from, you know, yep. up in Northern California hit me up and, Okay, it looks like maybe I can throw a little tour together, and so I'll I'll do that, you know. But as of right now, yeah, that's it. Sure. Maybe one day we can take that take that band and that album tour through Europe or Asia, or you know, I've never left the country. I'd love to leave the United States and see different parts of the world. That would be fun. So. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll happen. <laughs> Thanks. Anyway, brother, I love it, man. Love you. Everything you're doing. I love you, uh, brother. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, bro. Awesome. Where can some listeners reach out to you on justinwernermusic.com? Yes, sir. Justinwernermusic.com. And I also just created a website for my band, Escape Door. So it's escapedoorband.com. And the movie's Running Wild with Sharon Stone. That's right. Running Wild, Sharon Stone. They released it February 10th. Got it. And, um, 
hopefully going to hit on demand soon. So, you know, you'll be able to watch it there, but it's, it's pretty available right now. Very so cool. Yeah. It up. Awesome. Yeah, man, we'll do. And then at the very least, go to the website, check out the music. There's plenty of it. I was looking at all your videos. It's amazing. The assortment. I mean, you have hip hop videos. It's awesome, man. Really good stuff. Thanks. Yeah. I'm totally blown away. <laughs> So, yeah, check them out, justinwarnermusic.com. Well, thank you again. I really appreciate you, bro. Yeah, thank you very much. My pleasure. You got it, man. Have a great day. You too. Thanks, brother. You guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I came away with a lot of insightful information. If you have gained some value from this episode, please share this with your friends and family. You know, I don't do this for money. It is purely my passion to bring you this information and to work with these amazing artists. So if you can give me a five-star rate and review on iTunes, I would be so grateful. Otherwise, let me know your feedback. You can always send me email at andrew at wisdominsound.com. Of course, I'm looking for new music submissions always, and that's what's up. Thank you again for being here. My name is Andrew Mencher, and this is Wisdom in Sound. Wisdom in Sound.